Hello everyone, my name is Salar and you're watching Smart Code. This is a HTML tutorial and it's all about the div element. The div is the most used HTML element and it's a part of every website. I have never seen a single website code without the div element. Although the HTML have semantic tags to define the sections, but the div still lives doing its job and helping defining the content in the web page. So this tutorial is for beginners trying to learn the HTML and you will get to know everything that you need to know about the div. Now on the screen you see the outline that we are going to cover in this tutorial. We will start off with an introduction of the div and then we will see how to code the div element and after that we will study the empty div and div with content. Then we will see the nature of the div and in the last we will see the div with specified width and height. Right? This outline covers everything that you need to know about the div. Let's now cover this outline. So the introduction of the div, the div has a name, the content division element. The good thing with the HTML is that the name of the elements are very descriptive, such as head, title, body, HTML, and so on. Similarly, the div stands for content division element. The name content division tells straightforward the purpose of the div. The main purpose of the div is to divide the content on the web page and content division simply means define sections or groups, right? So this is the main purpose of the div element. It is used to group the HTML elements and defines sections. In addition to that, there are also some other usage of the div. For example, it's a very popular element to use in the experiments while learning the HTML. Because the div is a pure element and it does not have any style associated with it at the time you code it. So it makes div a very ideal element to use in the process of learning HTML and the CSS. But a div can also be style and this is another usage of the div. You can set width and height to the div, you can set background color to the div and you can even set an image as a background to the div. Right? So the div can also be styled using CSS just like any other HTML element. So that was a brief introduction of the div. Let's now start practicing with the div and implement everything that I told you in the introduction. So how do we code a div? A div is a paired element and that means it has an opening and a closing tag. So let's code a div. So here we have a div element and it is empty, right? There is no content in between the opening and the closing div element. An empty div has no appearance in the browser. And this is the first point that you need to remember. Let's now look into the browser and the dev tool to study an empty div. Here in the browser, you can clearly see an empty div has no appearance. Let's now open the dev tool. The dev tool gives more information about the rendered elements. Let's now select the div element. Now down here in the styles menu, you see the more information about the div. The only property which is set by default is the display property. The div is a block element and we will talk more about it later on. But here I want to point out one very important characteristic of the block elements. The width of the block element is always set to 100%. That means if you do not specify any width explicitly, it will always be 100%. And what does it mean? A width set to 100%. That means block elements take up the entire available width of the apparent container. Now look here, our div has a width of 884 pixels and the div is the child to the body. So the body has a width of 884 pixels and div is a child as well as a block element and that's why it's taking up the entire available width of its parent. Let's now select the body element and see if it's true or not. And here you see, the body has also a width of 884 pixels. I hope it's clear now. Here you see the evidence on the screen, right? Now, another important thing that you need to understand is the height of the empty div. The height of the empty div is always zero, just like the body. The height is actually determined by the content. As there is no content in the div, so the height is zero. But you can set any height to the div without any content. We will look into that in a couple of minutes. Now, another word noticing thing here is that there is no style associated with the div. As you can see, it has no padding, 
border and margin. But this is not the case with other block elements. They may have default margin and padding. For example, comment out the div and code an empty paragraph. So a paragraph is also a block element just like the div and you see it's totally empty. There is no content in it. But in the dev tool, you will see a different result. The paragraph has some more properties as compared to the div. The display is set to the block and it makes paragraph a block element and that's why you see here the width which is equal to the width of the parent just like the div element. But the paragraph by default has top and bottom margin which is set to 16 pixels and you see somehow this paragraph element makes its appearance in the browser even though it's also an empty element right now. So here you clearly see how div differentiate itself from the other block elements, right? So that was all about the empty div and I hope it makes sense to you. So after the empty div, we have div with content in our outline and now things going to become more interesting and I will show you some very practical stuffs here. A div can also have a single element as well as a bunch of HTML elements. And you can also code nested divs. There is no restriction on the nested level. And you can also code an empty div in order to create some shapes. For example, circle, square, and rectangles. Let's now look some very practical examples on div with content. Let's say you wanna put some text on the website so you can put it directly inside the div element. For example, we have a div, so let me put some text in it. Now take another div and put some more text, right? So we have two different divs containing only the text. Now, one very important feature of the div is that it can be assigned class, ID, or both. And by using classes and IDs, you can differentiate a div from another. For example, I can put a class important text to the first div and less important class to the second div. So now by using these classes, you can differentiate them. Let's say the important text has red background color. So in the CSS, we can target the div containing important text class. And now we can apply a CSS property, for example, the background color. And the same way you can target the less important class div and can give it a different style. And in the browser, we see the style to the first div, but not the second one. So there is something wrong in the code. And here our selector is less important, less important. Here I have misspelled important. Right, let's now refresh. And here you see the style. So that was a very basic and simple use of the div. And you will notice the more thing here. As I told you earlier, a div is a block element and a block element takes up the entire available width of the parent. And here it becomes more prominent because we now have background colors. You see the content ends here, but the div continue to expand itself to the edges, right? Now the size of the block element can be changed using the width and the height property. So let's now set another width and height to our divs. We will first set a different width. Let's say 200 pixels. So now you see the difference. We have explicitly specified a different width. Let's now talk about the height property. The height of the block elements is always set to auto by default until unless you change it. And that you see on the screen, we cut down the width, but the div expanded itself vertically to accommodate the content. But if you want, so you can set another height to the div. For example, set a height to 200 pixels. Now you see the height is not related with the content anymore. And when you code your own height to the block elements, you need to be very careful about the content you put in it. Because if the content doesn't fit in the block, it will overflow. For example, if I put some more content in the second div, you will see now an overflow of the content. And here you see that. So the content breaks the boundary of the div. And this is actually called overflow and in order to manage overflow we have an overflow property that we use i have a separate tutorial on overflow on my channel that you can watch later on right so let's now do some more experiment 
inside a div you can also have a single element for example a paragraph with some text so it's a very common use of div and we code like that because of some reasons for example we can give this paragraph a different look or style or maybe we are thinking to lay out it somewhere on the web page layout is another topic that we are not going to cover here but i can show you how to style this paragraph using the div element let's now target the div first and give it some styles Now target the paragraph and put some styles. Put some width to the div. Now you see the paragraph is styled totally differently. This box with gray background is actually the paragraph element. And here you see this light blue box with padding and border. It is the div element. You see now how you can style differently your HTML using the div element. Now, sometimes we put inline elements inside the div and there is a very valid reason to do that. So let me show you what we can accomplish by doing that. Right, so inside a div element, we have three anchor tags and the anchor tag is an inline element. Now in the browser, you will see some result like this and we need to open the dev tool now in the dev tool you can see our div with class nav and it has already taken up the entire available width right and inside the div we have three inline anchor elements now by using this technique you can align inline elements to the center of the parent container and the property that we use is called text align property and that property is applied to the parent so if you apply text align to the parent these three anchor elements will be center aligned because the div considers these elements as a text so in the css i will target the nav container or div and we will just write text align center now we just need to refresh the page and here you see all the navigations are central line right so let me show you another use of div we will program a div with several different html elements and define a section right so the defining the section or to divide the content is the main purpose of the div and you know that i have put an image of the cheetah which i will be using in the example so let's take a div and call it warning and inside it we will put a paragraph with text dangerous and now i will put the image of the cheetah and in the last another paragraph for some message like be aware of the cheetah right so here you see the main purpose of the div it is used to dividing the content and create the section let's now put the css and style this warning card we will first style the div let's put the border background color some padding and some alignment let's now select both the paragraphs inside the div and align the text to the center right and in the end we will give image a width of 100 percent and to the div we forgot to specify the width let's say the width is 400 pixels right now in the browser you will see a beautiful warning card using the div we put the border and the background and then we have a paragraph image and another paragraph this is an example that shows a content of a page is divided into the section with the help of div so that was about the div with the content and i showed you some examples of that the second last point in our outline is the nature of the div. The nature of the HTML elements means how they are displayed in the browser. And you have already seen earlier a div element is displayed as block in the browser. So the div by nature is a block element. In HTML, elements are divided into two broad categories, the inline elements and the block elements. And in addition to the inline and the block elements, there is another 
category which is called inline block and there are few HTML elements belong to that category. To know the nature of the HTML elements is very important. Without knowing them well, you actually can't style them properly. For example, you have seen earlier how the block behaves in terms of the width and the height. The inline elements behave differently to the width and the height. And the truth is that you can't set width and the height to the inline elements, right? So whenever you learn a new HTML element, you will look the nature of that element. Let's look over the final point of our outline, a div with only width and height. There are some occasions where you need to code an empty div in order to fill it later on with some content or to create some shapes. For example, we can use div to create shapes like a square and circle. So let me code two empty divs. So both the divs are empty and you know an empty div has no appearance in the browser, but it does appear in the browser if we set the width and the height to it. So in the CSS, we would do something like take the square the first and set it to 200 into 200 pixels because it is a square and now a background color. Target the circle div, set the size and the background color. And set border radius to 50% to make it look like a circle. And here you see the result of the empty divs with a specified width and height. So now we have covered the entire outline of this tutorial and I hope you got the clear picture of the development. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video and put the comment. I will see you around and thanks for watching.